Hi everyone, it's Julie from Yummy Men and Kick-Ass Chicks, and welcome to a special vlog edition of My Life's Quirks. Now, um, the weekend of May 27th, 28th, 29th, I went camping with my daughter and her Sparks crew. And the Sparks, for those who, of you who aren't aware, are it's like a branch of the Girl Guides, the, the youngest group. So they're five and six-year-olds, basically. And um, let me just start off by saying that I not an outdoors person. I love the days where it's like 15 degrees Celsius and there's a light breeze and nice sun, but usually when it's in the spring because the mosquitoes haven't come out yet and neither have any of the other bugs or the weird creepy crawly things that everywhere in the summertime. Anyways, I would be totally content, I think, if I could be indoors 99% of my time. I wish I loved the outdoors. Oh man! I, when I was younger, I had these great ideas and dreams that I would travel and, and go to all these national parks that are like some of the most beautiful places that you could ever see, ever, anywhere. And then I would camp and and then I would, you know, be at one with nature. And I just, oh, I can't do it. I can't do it. I just wish I could, but no, I can't. I don't like the rain. It's miserable. I can't do the sun. It's too hot. I get sticky and icky and I feel really weak. I dehydrate insanely fast and I'm really fair so I burn and anyways, I'm just, yeah, and the bugs, again, that's worth mentioning many times. Bugs, not a fan of bugs at all. Yes. So, and I'm just, anyways, I can't. So, my daughter had, um, there was a winter camp set up for a late last year, of course, and uh, my daughter really wanted to go, and she was super excited about going by herself. She'd be like, oh, I'm going, and no mommy, no daddy, no brother, no one, it's just me and my friends, and I get to cook my own breakfast, and all that kind of stuff. And then the closer we got to the time, she got more and more nervous about it, until finally she was ill, and she wasn't able to go. Now, my husband and I were both in scouts when we were younger. Me, my favorite part was not the camping. My husband loved it. He went really far in the scouts, so he went camping in all these crazy jamboree places like in the mountains and the, um, in the, the Rockies, the Canadian Rockies and everything. So we both knew that this was an experience that she needed to, well, to live through. And uh, I also knew that the only way that she would ever actually go to a camp is if I went with her. Now, because it's the Girl Guides, no men allowed, so my husband wasn't even considered and going. It had to be me. So I got my police check done and I you know, did all the paperwork I needed to do and all that kind of stuff. And then there I go, ready to go, go camping. So I was actually really nervous beforehand because I didn't know really what to expect. Apparently my mom said that I went to this campsite um, when I was in scouts, but goodness, I don't remember that. That was like, oh, I don't even want to go there, but how long ago that was. And, um, but I have no recollection of it. And I went through the list over and over and over, make sure I don't forget anything. And and uh, I, I assumed that it was just going to be the Sparks and Brownies. But when we got there, there were a lot more girls. So there were probably close to 100, if not 120 girls total when we got there. And uh, it was pouring rain. Oh, it was pouring rain. It was part of the Bird Sanctuary, which is um, in eastern Ontario. And that is a very popular place for Canada geese. So I guess my first indication of how my weekend was going to be should have been when we got there and Canadian geese were just flopping around, walking amongst people, you know, giving the finger to the cars because we were in their way. <laughs> and um, and then when we got out of the car, there was this, these giant poos. Yeah, Canada geese. They poo green, didn't know that, and they poo lots. Oh, do they ever. Lovely. And, uh, yeah, so that was everywhere. And in the rain, it was even muckier. So when we first got to the camp, finally we found it. They kept going, don't go here, don't go here. So we didn't go there. Then we went back to the information desk, and they said, yeah, you have to go there. So we ended up going there, and that's where the camp was. Um, and we were one of the first ones to arrive. And first place you need to go is the dining hall to sign up. And that's when I walk in. It's like, oh, this is such a, it's a little run down, but 
if, you know, big tables and kind of ick, but the rain didn't help because it made everything feel all heavy and damp. So my daughter decided to go in this cabin, so off we went to that cabin. Yes, we were sleeping in cabins at least. Thank goodness we were sleeping in cabins. But when we got there, the cabin had been painted white inside, but probably not, oh, within the last 15, 20 years because there was so much graffiti in there. Not graffiti, you know, people signing their names, you know, like, Emma was here, and Jack was here, and those kind of really original things that children tend to write on the wall when they're not really supposed to write on the wall. But my daughter walked in, and she actually used the words creepy. She said, Mom, this is creepy. And she was right. You know that episode of The Simpsons where Homer starts to go a little berserkoid, and he's in a dark room, and he's writing, uh, no TV and no beer makes Homer and something, something, go crazy, don't mind if I do that one. Yeah. That's that's what it felt like. So she's like, I don't want to be in this one. And she's starting to panic. And honestly, so am I. I'm like, this isn't so bad, honey. It's great. And she's like, woo. And I'm like, my husband's like, oh my God, don't leave me here. But like, it's great. You know, that kind of thing. So sucked it up, went back to the dining hall, said we want to go to a different cabin. So we went to the other cabin. It had not been painted, so the writing wasn't as uh, um, so that one felt okay, although most of the top, bunk, top bunks were busted. They were broken. And uh, you can supposed to have eight people per cabin. We can actually only fit six in almost all of them because it was, like I said, this place has been a little run down. I think it run, it's run by volunteers, and I guess these volunteers don't volunteer all that much. So when we got there in that cabin, we felt okay, except all the windows had been left open, so half the mattresses were soaked. And uh, there were piles of dead bugs everywhere. Piles of dead bugs everywhere. Everywhere! <sighs> Anyways, if you go further down, I posted a few pictures, you'll see the pile of um, little black things. Yeah, those are ladybugs. Hundreds of dead ladybugs in the cabin. Just there in a pile. <sighs> Anyways, so that was that. But then there was no one else in the cabin. I guess not as many people showed up as they thought. So uh, eventually we were brought to a different cabin, and my daughter was so much happier because it's her friend from school, and we were in there. Actually, we were in the brownie cabin because uh, that's the mom was there, and she's got a daughter, and the guy's a daughter, and the brownies and a daughter and Sparks, so they're all sleeping together. And anyways, so that ended up being okay, except for the pouring rain. It still rained all through the night, so we had our campfire sing along in the dining hall, and. At least there was toilets. That was the important part. At least there were no plenty. I was worried there for a bit because when I went to the information center to ask for directions, I'm like, oh, bathroom, I'll just go quick, you know, and because uh, nerves. You know? <laughs> and uh, it was a fancy outhouse. And I'm like, please don't be like this because a whole weekend without, oh, <sighs> I hate camping. <laughs> but it wasn't running water, and uh, that was good. The only downside about that is because of all the rain, it backed up the septic, septic tanks, I think she said. So they stopped flushing. And then they got clogged and backed up. And then the second day, here I am holding a garbage bag while another leader is taking a giant pair of kitchen tongs and plucking out whatever was in the toilet. Put it in the garbage bag I was holding because otherwise it would have flooded the bathroom. Yeah, I didn't sign up for that. I do enough poop cleanup during the week while I'm working at home with the toddlers. I wasn't planning on that. But again, that one didn't work out, but at least the second bathroom, which was supposed to be the boys' bathroom, um, but there were no boys that, that weekend, so at least that was, you know, they, that one works. Two stalls for over 100 girls. Yeah, good, good times. Good times. But because of the rain and because the weather wasn't all that hot, we actually didn't have to deal with the mosquitoes. I had been told that because this is on an island that the mosquitoes are insane. And I brought two bottles of mosquito repellent and only really needed to use it a little bit the evening of the second day because uh, it was actually dried up. So we were able to do a little bit of a campfire that day, which was good. The girls liked that. But man, oh man, I forgot how sometimes girl guide songs are kind of boring. Um, I think they need to modernize it a little bit, <laughs> but, you know, who am I to say? So, yeah, so got the cabin, yeah, the pictures are on the bottom, the outside of the cabin, the inside of the cabin, again, could be worse, because it was a really cabin. The theme was uh, Aboriginals, which is a very common theme here. I'm sure over in Europe, 
you have no idea what I'm talking about. <laughs> but in North America, basically, um, when you guys came here, I guess technically me too, and uh, said, this is my land, um, all the aboriginals that were already here were like, poo-poo, go away. And uh, apparently, you know, they didn't like that very much. But they had a great culture, strong culture. They still do. They're just not as, um, as many of them as there used to be. And uh, so they do a lot of learning. We, there's part, they're part of the curriculum in the schools, learning about the aboriginals that were here uh, when the settlers first arrived and stuff like that. So it was pretty cool. The crafts were great. Uh, daughter made a dream catcher and stuff. But there were hardly any volunteers there, hardly any parents. I wonder why. <laughs> but seriously, I was surprised at how few there were. Like for that many girls to have so few adults helping and, you know, we each had one meal to take care of. So at least mine was um, breakfast the last day. It was just cold cereal. So that was, that was easy. But I figure after helping clean out the toilets, I deserved a bit of a break. <laughs> and, uh, oh, I'd forgotten how great it was to be woken up by a flashlight flashed in your face in the middle of the night, 2 o'clock in the morning, because someone in the cabin had to go pee. And my daughter kept falling out of the bed. Thank goodness she was in the bottom bunk. So, yeah, but not, not much sleep was had by anyone. But overall, my daughter had a blast. And I actually didn't have that horrific of a time. Once you got used to the idea that at least I'm in a cabin, and at least my daughter's having fun, and at least I'm eating decent food, and the kids are, are you know, they're good in the view. I posted a picture of the view, too, right along the St. Lawrence River. Beautiful view. It's, it was kind of worth it. And uh, I'll definitely be volunteering again next year, where you'll probably hear me once again go on and on about it. <laughs> but eh, what can you do? I'm not a camper. But at least the whole time, I just kept saying to myself, it could be worse. I could actually be there with the girl guides and the Pathfinders. Those are nine-year-olds plus, and they actually had to be intense and they cooked all of their own food on the campfire and on the little wood stove when they didn't have, um, when it was raining. So yeah, these girls, a thumbs up to them. I still can't get over these little girls. When we arrived and I'm like practically crying and begging Jason to take me home, they were smiling and laughing outside, like I said again, pouring rain, putting up their tents, pitching up their tents and their gazebos and everything to get ready for their own camp. And their attitude was, Phenomenal. So I had to take it from a, a page from their book because they, yeah, it blew me away. So that's it. Anytime I felt like crying because, you know, I was either woken up or I was, you know, plucking poo out of the toilet. I, um, yeah, I thought, you know, look at them. I could be worse. <laughs> anyway, so that's my adventure, my camping adventure. Aren't you excited that I shared it with you? <laughs> Anyways, so there you go. Camping with the Girl Guides. Just another one of my life's quirks.